Welcome back. I'm Jesse, and for those that don't know, I'm here at the Wolfram Technology Conference 2017 talking to developers and other interesting people who are using our technology in some really cool ways. Um, I'm here with Patrick, who's a part of our uh, math core team who works on System Modeler. And he's going to tell us a little bit more about what exactly that is and what he's doing here at the conference. Right. Uh, so what we have here, Jesse, is a virtual model that we built of a robotic arm. Mm -hmm. So before we went ahead and we actually built a real, the real thing, but before we went ahead and built that, we could try different scenarios on a virtual prototype. And this is really good in, for example, an industrial environment if you're building these, uh, these really expensive things. If you're building a really expensive six degree robotic arm, mm -hmm. you want to be absolutely sure that what you're building will uh, perform the way you want it to perform in the design stage. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what System Modeler is as a product, just for those that, that don't know? It's uh, one of those things that System Modeler can be used for. Uh, System Modeler is also very useful in, for example, education. If you, in this case, if you were having a mechatronics class, you want to understand control systems, you want to understand advanced topics like inverse kinematics, then you could also use System Modeler for that. But it's, uh, most of our customers are within uh, product development type of thing. Uh, so, the, so the thing we could see, for example, was if the robot, uh, the robot design, if it were able to reach the places we wanted it to reach. Um, so you can go ahead and move some of these sliders. Okay, here, let me see yeah. if I can. Oh. Ooh, that's cool. And you'll see that the virtual model of the robotic arm performs just in the same way as the real stuff does. And it's tracking the, the movement mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. And I, you can see we have some like googly eyes that are not on the, the bottle on the computer. But Yeah, uh, that was a last minute design change that we really should have incorporated because <laughs> it looks absolutely cute now. <laughs> yeah. So you notice it, you'll notice it if I turn this around a bit. Mm -hmm. and, sorry. Uh, and you can do that same thing you did with the kind of square that you were mapping out. You'll notice that it's, it's keeping it in a certain plane. Right. And that's due to one of the control systems that are running behind this. Uh, so what we could do then is without actually trying it on the actual hardware, we could try a control system that keeps it in level like this on the virtual thing. And that saves a lot of production costs. It's, uh, it's easier to iterate over many different designs without actually endangering the real hardware. So the trick here is that uh, with those two sliders you move it, it in the, if we call this the back and forth or the x direction and then the y direction up and down, then you need to move, there are three servos here that you need to move in unison in order to actually keep it in that uh, in that plane. Uh, and that is what the control system does, that we could map out on the uh, model-based design rather than on the real one and then of course it, it only has a limited reach so we could for example see that oh what if we increased the length of the arm would that reach the places we wanted it to reach mm -hmm. and you can move this one also it's oh I it's back and forth it's wait this one you turn it right well, it moves it back and forth, but then, oh. but then it has a bit limited reach, which means that it will, will kind of adjust the other ones. But I see. Mm. So, how exactly is this working? Like, it, I, I see here you have like a you have a breadboard and you have an Arduino. So, mm -hmm. what exactly is like going on with this yeah. interface? So let me show you a bit what's happening behind the scenes and I'll open up System Modeler here. And this is where we built this real-time uh, control. So what we have here, the start of all of it, is a representation of this Arduino board here. And it gets three inputs that it sends to the controller. Actually, let me go into this one and you'll see that it just consists of a model of this Arduino 
that establishes a real-time connection, and you can just build this using drag and drop. You drag, the, drag this board into the diagram here, and then we have some different things representing the different pins on the board. And then you, with just this, you could run it in real time, and you'll get back the data from the Arduino. And then we do some limiting of the signal. And then we send it back into that controller that I talked about that right. keeps it in that plane. Mm -hmm. So that is what we call inverse kinematics. Okay, that makes sense since mm -hmm. it's you know, being yeah. raised in the negative one. Yeah. Uh, and from that, so we input the angles we wanted, to, uh, the coordinates we wanted to be, and we wanted to be in a certain x, y, and z position. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we get back from that is a are three angles, the three angles for these three servos. And then we send those three angles to, for example, we, send, we can send it to this model here, and it will uh, tell the servos in the model what they should do, and we can see how, it, how they move. And we can also send it to a new Arduino board, and that's the one back here, it might be a bit hard to see. But this one takes the real-time signals, mm -hmm. sends it to the, this breadboard, which powers the servos and gives it the signal where it should move. So that's why it's happening both in a virtual environment and in the real thing. That's cool. Um, so are there, are, I'm guessing there are easy ways to sort of change the, the direction of the motion um, you know, so this isn't so, like, X, Y. Yeah, so you could, one thing you could do, for example, is you could allow this, these two uh, set the angles on the servos. Mm -hmm. So instead of say, setting the positions, then oh, you could set okay. the angles. Yeah. And that would be much easier, then we wouldn't have, need to have this block. We would just oh, okay, connect yeah. it up like this, and then that would indicate okay. um, how it should move. Of course, you could swap it around or you could, you know, implement any other type of control system that you want. You could say that this should be the velocity that it moves at instead. Mm -hmm. But that would be a lot harder to control. Right, yeah. So there's a lot of flexibility that comes mm -hmm. with being able to prototype and system yeah. modeler versus having to sort of go through the design stage every time you want to do something different. And you know, if if these were to set the velocity of the servos, then you you could end up in real bad places. You know, <laughs> it would easily hit hit the ground, it hit itself. It has hit itself on a number of occasions. But we could see that in the the model of the system. We could, I mean, the model behaves just as uh, right. just in the yeah, same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, that would be predicted yeah. before you even yeah. try it. Yeah. So then we could we could also take those measurements, those sensor, sensor measurements from the robot, insert them into the Wolfram language and detect, okay, the robot hit itself again, <laughs> that was bad, what, what can we iterate to, mm -hmm. to do that? And we could do that very rapidly because we're not doing it on the real thing, we're doing it in the computer. Mm -hmm. So Wolfram System Modeler has been out for a little while, but I know that there was now a like latest version that was released, version 5. What are some of the like latest features that y'all have implemented in that version versus uh, 4 or 3? Yeah, so one thing uh, that is in System Modeler uh, is a library where you, uh, that you can use uh, with pre-built components that you just drag and drop and connect <coughs> together uh, to build different types of systems. For example, there's a library for building electronical circuits or there's a library for building mechanical systems. So in System Model 5.0 that, uh, that library got updated with some new things like um, power converters, it has uh, uh, fluid and gas media that you can model. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of new things there. Uh, also we've made we always try to make the integration with the Wolfram language uh, smoother and tighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things you can do now is you can think of this model as a uh, just as any other Wolfram language function. And the thing you and you call that function with different parameter values. So it could be uh, the length of the robot arm. That could be a, a parameter value. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and that's an input to to the function which is this model. Okay. And then you could just call that function with a new value for the the arm, and then you can do an analysis on that. You can see, okay, where, how long did the robot? Mm -hmm. reach with these parameter values. Yeah, so these are now like symbolic elements that can be manipulated just yeah. like anything else in Wolfram language. Uh, yeah, and that's something that we are continuing to iterate on and there will be some uh, really exciting changes there coming in just a little while where we're, a model will truly be a symbol symbolical representation in the Wolfram language. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, thanks again, Patrick, for taking the time to set all this up. Um, if you all have any questions, uh, like usual, please leave them in the comments. We can't really get to them during these live sessions, but someone will be able to get back to you. Um, there's also community.wolfram.com where there's a system modeler group, so if you're interested in seeing some of the kind of ongoing discussions and maybe someone has posed your question already there, um, so I would, I would check that out. So, and uh, yeah, thanks again, Patrick. Thank you.